hate to return a tomcat empty-handed, but this just leaves us twisting in the wind. Perhaps they can point us in a new direction. The data cache is no longer our main objective, but it would be nice to know where it is and why it was taken. Maybe they took it for corporate espionage? Maybe they took it to delay Hayden's research? Maybe we could just think about maybes all day long. Hmm. Oh, goodness. It's a distinct possibility. They all are. I just don't have enough personal experience with the human revolution to give you an honest answer. The information on the mesh net is extremely conflicting and desperately polarized. Let's bring this back a second and just notice, like, this is very normal stuff. Not necessarily the uh, extreme nature of this human revolution group being, like, super vandalizing. Uh, but that, too, like, it's kind of rooted in reality. But, like, this is a very real situation where uh, Turing points out that on the mesh net, just on the interbuts, there is this group that has very extreme political stance that polarizes just by their existence uh, and their philosophies polarizes um, information on the net and polarizes political opinion as well as creates their own um, propaganda that continues to muddle up the conversation uh, and just make things hard to parse out uh, which you know as someone in 2015 would understand and know I guess 2016 almost. Um, it's getting that's very very common to just have loads of information and misinformation, both willingly and neglectfully, uh, thrown about as way of propaganda, right? Uh, for any any kind of political viewpoint, because the loudest must be heard. Oh shit! Meanwhile, meanwhile in Explosion Land, <laughs> during no, what happened? Oh crap, now we're gonna get caught. Oh Jesus. <sighs> what a cliffhanger. Holy crap. Chapter 2. <laughs> okay. So, just at the end of chapter 1, let's kind of like bring things together. Let's recap. Uh, we have a very clear understanding of about five main characters, five or six or so. Uh, some major political players that are in the game that are more ideas than people. Uh, we know that we are definitely now very much involved in the investigation of Hayden at a government level, uh, at a bureaucratic level. And we know that there are two states of being. There are two states of being that Hayden's apartment has been in. We went into it after he was kidnapped. It was totally fine. We went into it after he was kidnapped, and it was not so fine. All of that said, I guess the best place that we can kind of set ourselves now, uh, after after basically everything from the prologue and everything from Act One, um, gosh, where does that leave us, like thematically? Uh, we've opened up all of these ideas that politics are complicated. That government work is complicated, but also important to this story. Uh, do you follow the rules or do you go against them? And so far, all of the characters kind of align themselves under some idea of justice. Not only social justice or political justice, um, but just trying to figure out what is right and what is wrong. So under the scope of this very kind of generic uh, missing person mystery, the genre of the missing person mystery, um, we're looking at a lot of different layers. And uh, <laughs> now that we've been knocked out and taken captive, hopefully, probably, and some flashing disco lights have uh, totally incapacitated us, let's see where the disco lights took us. And hopefully we can get a little bit more information from Turing. Oh, what a ride. Hospital. Another government facility. Solid! Thank goodness you're finally awake! I'm literally all Turing has. And Turing is a very emotional robot. 
which is so fucking cool. <laughs> Turing has uh, emotional needs and, and like a, a need to connect with other people that when that is not met, Turing has emotional problems. Um, and that's cool on the one side. On the other side, I don't think I talked about this, but the, uh, not the Froyo stand, the uh, little watering hole ROM with the cups in the water got very sad when they could not accomplish their like main directive. Not that they got, they got hostile, they got a little rambunctious, wild, um, but also very sad. And I thought that was kind of cool, that was interesting. There's something there. Uh, some kind of like real shred of humanity that is in ROMs, and ROMs are very basic usually, where they have a core directive like giving water to the tourists or me. Um, that when that doesn't happen, uh, they have an emotional reaction, not just a computational reaction. Okay, so Turing has spent the past 30 minutes calculating the odds of you being indefinitely incapacitated or immobilized. I'm relieved to find my pessimism was misplaced and that you appear to be okay. That's so loud, your voice is even more agonizing than usual. I'm fine. Whoever ambushed us clearly wasn't interested in causing either of us serious harm. After you collapsed, my power systems were jammed by whoever attacked us. It took me ten minutes to reboot and call an ambulance. When we left, I noticed they had done the same thing to the NSFPD ROM that was standing post. It takes a lot of power to crash one of those things, even temporarily. What's strange is that there isn't any evidence of any impact trauma on your head at all. The doctors were originally worried that you may have suffered a concussion, but thankfully that isn't the case. My best calculations indicate you were hit by some kind of neurologic scrambler. Wow, that's pretty cool. They are serious military hardware and difficult to obtain, and that type of non-lethal electrical field would interrupt my systems as well. A mild spec neuroscrambler is my best deduction. A mil spec. And why did they attack us and just leave? If we walked in on them while they were searching the apartment for Hayden's files, I can understand them stunning us to make their escape. But the probability that they're actually after me, or rather, the research behind my creation seems high. But not after Turing themselves? Hmm. Leaving me when I was so unvulnerable makes no sense. See? So who did this? They didn't want Turing, and they didn't want me to be there. Perhaps a big multinational corporation, or even an actual government. I now believe my original hypothesis to have been correct. Hayden must have been kidnapped by a powerful organization looking to get control of his research. Trashing our apartment may have been a cover for the theft of the data cache we're looking for. I'm suspecting a smokescreen. Uh, I don't know why it wouldn't be. Maybe they didn't recognize you? Like, to be the actual... Even the most casual access to Hayden's research would have turned up physical descriptions of me. And even if they weren't sure, like... Look at this, I'm fucking Turing. What do you want? We were at the scene of the crime, so to speak. <clears throat> Surely interrogating us would have cost them little. But they wanted to get in and get out without being seen or noticed, so... They did a good job of that. Hit us from behind, nothing showed up in my optics before I was disrupted. They either had cloaking of some kind, or were just very careful making their way into the apartment. My optics, while not top of the line, are better than an off-the-shelf ROMs, and I should have been able to detect any thermal changes that from someone being there. Did they just sneak in the front door while they were rummaging? When my RAM got scrambled, I lost a few seconds of memory that hadn't been written to my data drive. Anyway, the nurses told me they want you to stay overnight for observation, Solon. A sound precaution to be sure. But if we were to hit them, hit, if we were hit with a neuro scrambler, not a blunt object, it's a waste of time. I won't presume to make medical decisions for you, but perhaps we should pressure them for your release today. It's just Hayden's trail is getting cold. Okay, I love that. I'm okay. Before I forget, here are your belongings. The nurses had me hold on to them until you were awoke. Here's your ID card. Don't lose this again. And my headphones. The headphones. And I think that's it. Notice the article on your computer before. Good job getting published. 
And finally, here's your commemorative glass of water that you got from Alfie. Oh no! My water got broken. Now all we have is this broken commemorative glass. <laughs> Oops. Maybe we should just throw it away. You're right. Wouldn't want to cut yourself. Broken glass removed from items. <laughs> Safety first, kids. Just let me know when you want to leave. Uh, excuse me? I do not mean to be a busybody, but you see, visitors are so rare these days. Have I overheard that your friend has gone missing? Who's this guy? During? Curtains? Who's behind the curtains? Oh, snap! Some guy! Hey, some guy! Let's examine him first. Seems he's your roommate. Oh! Better now, once again. I'm sorry for being nosy. But were you perhaps speaking of Hayden Weber? He is an old friend of mine. And I would be most concerned if it indeed were he whom you were discussing. Is everything all right? Who are you? And why were you listening in on our conversation? Ah, of course. I have not yet introduced myself. You are quite right to be wary, assuming the serious nature of what I overheard. My name is Dr. Yannick Fairlight, and I am the founder and former CEO of System One Software, now a parallax company. He's telling the truth, at least as far as I can intuit from information on the mesh net. And I do recall Hayden mentioning, mentioning a Dr. Fairlight at least once in passing at some point. Oh, I see. Confirmation on my identity. But about us. I apologize for that. It isn't difficult to overhear bits of every conversation in this room. I may not regret it, however, if this situation indeed concerns us both. Perhaps we can help each other. I will not press you for information, but perhaps I can be of some assistance. I remember my association with Hayden fondly, and I would be happy to help in any way I can. I have nothing better to do regardless. Okay. That's kind of weird and interesting. We get sent to the hospital, and what we gain out of it is a contact with Mr. Fairlight. But... Uh, interesting. That's kind of... Okay. Been admitted to the hospital, and I have a friend here now. So, the mystery just keeps getting thicker. And I get no release. Like, ever. Like, I'm not being let go. There's no, like, well, here's a little bit more information that'll help you solve the case. It's just like, alright, I see we're spiraling more and more deeper into this mystery. There, there is no light at the top. <laughs> Can't see any way out anymore. Okay, what are you doing here? It is quite a coincidence that we find ourselves here sharing a room. But such things happen from time to time. It's not so mysterious. It's up to us to seize opportunity when it appears. I am getting a bit on in, in... I'm getting a bit on in years. And this chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support ROM. His development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medications as necessary to keep my body stable. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at least would have been severely bedridden. But look at him all cross-legged. He looks so, like, just ready to go. That's cool. It requires frequent maintenance, and I am here at the hospital to have it serviced. Unfortunately, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once, and my appointment has been pushed back. The hospital administrators were concerned about me, thus they placed me here in a room with a quiet patient, so that I can continue my work while waiting. I do not th think they expected you to wake awaken quite as quickly as you did. So, uh, how did you meet Hayden? This is our first date, me and Mr. Fairlight. Hayden and I met our acquaintance when Parallax and my company underwent a murder. Merger, not murder. 